Hello. I'm sure you're wondering, what is he doing? Well, let me tell you. A giant man child with a suppressor. And no adult supervision. God, it's tiny and I can park it wherever I want. So anyways, Amazon lied to me. They said that was a 72 inch camera stand and it isn't. It's five foot, which is 60 inches, not 72 like I was promised. And uh, we all know what that extra foot means. But today we're gonna have some fun. It occurred to me as I was looking through some of my guns and getting stuff ready, by the way, angry fish right but yes it occurred to me that i really haven't done a range video with my glock 17 yet so oh boy i love hearing extra things knocking around but today we're going to be shooting my glock 17 but because my glock 17 fits in the chassis we're going to be running that but we're also going to see how much accuracy changes when you use a suppressors but you guys make me want to keep doing this so again thank you guys very much i'm out here at middletown firearms training center range whatever you want to call it i'm on the steel shooting side we have a paper side and a covered indoor style area so we have the ability to do a lot of stuff now the epa and uh, permits and stuff for our 200 meter rifle range behind me which is down that hill Hasn't been approved yet, so we can't use that for the public, but make sure to uh, keep your eyes on the internet, because that may change. But of course, Glock created a phenomenon when they came out with their gun series, starting, of course, with 17 and the 19, which is arguably one of the most sold personal protection handguns in the world. But the Glock 17 is one of the most used defensive pistols in the world. Mine is slightly upgraded. I don't like stock Glock stuff. I haven't changed the trigger yet because I've been carrying it. I do believe that as a carry piece, you should leave the trigger stock. It has a decent enough trigger for self-defense because you can just sit there and plink, plink, plink. If you're going to turn it into a range toy, which this gun eventually will become, I will be changing that out for some sort of rolling trigger or a flat face Steel City Arsenal or something. But for now, it's running just a Zev barrel target sights. Here, let me show you. And those of you out there that say, oh, he could have loaded it between walking through. But it's got a front fiber optic with a blacked out rear. It's kind of a Dawson style. I don't think they're actually Dawson's, but who knows? They might be. But it has a fiber optic front blacked out rear, which is what I like for target shooting. And of course, I'm at the steel range again today. Like I said, I like the steel side because I don't have to set up and take down targets. I don't have to be as precise. I can have some fun. But once we put some rounds through the gun, I'm going to switch over to the Meta Tactical Apex Series. Uh, this is the GFC. I think that means uh, Glock full chassis or something. But as you can see, it turns your Glock 17 into a bullpup. And how is it able to have a stock? Well, glad you asked. If you saw the long form video I did, you would have seen that it came with this. This is a 16 inch barrel. And I can tell you for a fact, it does not cycle on my gun without being in the chassis for some reason. And I don't know why, but we'll be checking that out. How's this editing going, Joe? Probably shitty. And then finally, before we get going, I do want to thank Core Belt. I've been wearing Core Belts for four years now, ever since I first found out about them and I love them. 
they sent me a few belts. I've been wearing them for a while. Obviously, they work really well because I can fully carry a Glock 17, 1911. You guys know that I'm a 1911 guy. And these belts are designed to allow you to keep your holster up without your butt showing. I was going to say something rude, but don't want to do that. But, 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 but. So being able to safely and securely carry your firearm without it dragging your pants down and you're walking around all day going, hold on, fellas, hold on, is very important to me because when I'm in the gun store, I have to do a lot of bending over, standing up, sitting down, and the core belts are very good at that. I'm wearing the 1.75 Garrison. They also make one and a half inch, which is the more common size, and any one of them are going to be perfect for you. As you can see, when I'm wearing my Glock on my side, it stays tucked in because the belt doesn't allow it to like draw my pants out and I think it works well. If you like core belts, make sure to check them out in the description down below. I'll leave a link and I believe they have a discount code. I have to double check that it's still active, but if it is, just check them out. Tell them that Joe sent you from the Jiminy Show and that you decided to get some belts because core. Why don't we get back to the video? I have to bend over because again, camera stick was a lie. I'm using a couple different flavors of just regular ammo here. You got Blazer Brass 115 grain, and then I'm using Federal, I believe this is aluminum cased. No, it's actually brass. Just has the wrong picture on the front. This might not even be Federal. Oh, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna be using all brass, luckily, but this is actually going to be standard 115 grain stuff. And then for the suppressor fun, we're gonna be using Fioki Range Dynamics 147 grain. It's a subsonic round. So it will allow us to have fun. It's been five weeks since I had my LASIK surgery. So I have to make sure that I protect my eyes, but also I'm able to see and sight a little bit better with my left eye. Is it 100% yet? No, but hopefully soon it will be because I'm getting tired of not being able to come out and shoot comfortably. So if you're thinking about LASIK surgery, keep in mind your vision is going to be fucky for a while. So what just occurred to me is that I actually haven't shot this particular Glock since I bought it because, well, it's a Glock. They all shoot like Glocks. But also I was using my buddy's Meta Tactical in the, or excuse me, my buddy's Glock in the Meta Tactical when we were shooting that. So I want to put some rounds through this, see how it does. I'm just going to flank around on the uh, black targets here, maybe hit the three foot by two foot, maybe take down the Texas Star. Who knows? We'll see how accurate it is. I'm okay with a Glock, but I'm used to a 1911 linear trigger, and I'm not gonna lie, it does make a difference. So, here goes. Eyes and ears. Okay, here we go. Feeds them all, even though I'm not on. I'm on uneven I'm on uneven ground, so if I wobble around you'll know why. I have to stand all cattywampus. So far, so good. Like I said, it's nothing special. It's just uh, all kinds of different flavors. 
so far the gun's shooting as expected. It's not like I was expecting anything funny. It is a Glock, so. Glock gonna Glock, yo. So I'm gonna put one more mag through it. I'm actually gonna shoot over you at the uh, swingers and just run one mag through it because I like to live dangerously. And if I shoot my phone, well, then I get a new phone. Plus, I wanna see if the concussive wave damages my phone. You should be able to hear the dings. I'm also not the person that sighted this gun in. Well, you don't like burning off your fingertips? Well, you say we have a little bit of hushaboom fun. So this is the Osprey 9 pistol caliber suppressor made by Silencer Co. Makes things very quiet, especially when you use the right ammunition which we will be doing in the form of 147 grain ammunition. And we will be switching to the chassis system for the rest of my ammo, just not yet. Don't forget to like, a comment, and uh, maybe give me a follow, a super thanks, or maybe become a member. We're up to six members. I can almost buy a Happy Meal every month, so thanks. So now we're going to shoot suppressed. I want you to hear the first round because it is a 115 grain full metal jacket and the next rounds will be 147 grain. So you're going to hear there's going to be a very noticeable difference in the sound. Let's hope it cycles because I haven't shot this gun with the suppressor on it yet. And I'm going to shoot into the dirt. Now here goes a 147 grain. So now we're at what's called hearing safe level. Literally, you're not hearing anything other than the action of the gun, a little bit of a puff, and then the round hitting down there. I'll hit some steel so you can hear the difference. Yeah. It's so quiet you can hear ricochets, uh, little pieces of uh, shrapnel bouncing up and hitting stuff. So. Oh no, I missed one. I'm going to move you so you can see me cycling through and uh, we'll have some more fun. Also, this little button is a wonderful thing because it allows you to keep clocking your suppressor to keep it upright. So, just like before, 147 grain, and it is hearing safe, so. Party on, Wayne. This is why you wear eye protection. I just got hit in the lens with some blowback. So I'm gonna step back even further a little bit. You can hear the action off the gun. Woo. You see how dirty it's getting in there. But that's part of the fun of uh, suppressor ownership. Step over and hit the plate rack.
keep getting hit by uh, stuff coming backwards out of the gun, which is going to happen. But uh, yeah, I'm going to load up one more mag and then we'll go fast. So I'm just finishing up with the last of my suppressed ammo. I'm just kind of shooting around. I just want to do a mag dump on it, what's left of the mag, and we'll see how it sounds. You hear that? You can hear it in the background, all the crap that's still falling down. Now comes the hot part, getting the suppressor off. Oh, without burning your hand. That will have to cool before it goes back in the box. I thought you like to see how dirty these things get. And I'll show you the barrel after I take it out because we're going to put this in the chassis there. So once you make sure your gun's clear, go ahead and lower it, pull your trigger. Damn, son, that got hot. Wish I was wearing gloves. Good luck, everybody. Yeesh. Yeesh. So you saw that in real time, still extremely hot, but as you can see, absolutely filthy in there. Look at that. You definitely got to clean these guys out. Oh, the heat transfer, even through the barrel. Yeesh. So now we're going to put our 16 inch barrel in it and put it in our chassis system. Smart man would wait for the giant lump of steel to cool down. But uh, no one's ever accused me of being a smart man. But anyways, once you put that in, grab your guide rod, which is metal on mine, so that's good and very hot still. Well, how are you touching it? Because I'm not a girl. Ow! Broke a nail. Then you're going to put this back on your gun. And for shits and grins, I'm going to show you what happens when you try to fire it without it being in the chassis. We're just going to use two rounds because it's not going to cycle. If it does cycle, I'll be impressed. Actually, that's a thing I want to try real quick, too. I'm going to try two rounds of 115 and two rounds of 147 to see if a heavier round will cycle. But ears, kids. Doesn't have the kickback power. Bring me the Batman. Surprised it actually kicked that one out. Let's try a couple of 147 grainers. They might have enough power to cycle this thing without it being in the chassis. Tally ho! 147! Yay! I'm still waiting for an answer back from Silencer Co. whether or not I need to run a Nielsen device or if I can just run this with a fixed piston and barrel adapter because it is still a pistol. So, all right, so you've decided to put your gun into your chassis, pull your pin out, and then throw it because you have five. No, I'm just kidding. But you're going to pull that pin out because that's where your trigger is going to be seated with the trigger bar. Take your GNU. Slide it inside, wiggle it around because it doesn't always go in the right way the first time. Make sure that it's in there right. Nope, you're not because it's jammed, so you open it back up. So, after a little bit of struggles because you're an idiot and you put your gun in the wrong way, you are now free to move about the cabin. I won't be putting the threaded protector back on because Right now, I don't care. But go ahead and put your thing back in there. And make sure your gun can cycle. 
and load up some ammo. I've installed it in the chassis system and now we're gonna run some rounds through it. I just have a 45 degree red dot mount on there because I was bored because boredom. But I am running a, it's called a Guertar. It's a Chinese company. They sent it to me. It's basically a Romeo 5 knockoff and it actually seems to work pretty good, but I don't know how well it's sighted. I shot with it on this gun once, but I haven't shot with it since, so. First mag is gonna be a little bit uh, low on ammo because I'm down to my last 75 rounds or so. And we're just gonna plink away and see how this thing cycles and whether or not it's accurate. Seeing as it's a $500 chassis system, I sure hope it works well. And I've only shot it once and it seemed to work fine when I did it, so. Well, let's see what happens. Failure to eject. Like I said, I'm trying not to fall over, so guys, I do apologize for the swaying, but that's just me. Oh! I'm going to blame the ammo that's in here. This is some reman stuff from what I can tell. gun doesn't work clear you can see this is crap ammo when you run crap ammo you get crap results yeah still piping and stuff I don't think these are strong enough rounds for what it's trying to do because again it's a 16 inch barrel that it's trying to knock back It's not going to run with the mag, just change the mag. I think these are my 147 grain bullets. Yeah, these are my 147 grainers. Should run this gun fine. If they were new manufactured 9, it would have been alright, but since they aren't, it isn't. How's that for a statement? I think I'm back down to the crap ammo. You could hear that one was a bad one. Last mag, step over to the swingers. Ammo is very important. But now we're gonna do something you wouldn't normally be able to do with a rifle. I challenge you. To a single shot duel. More. Oh. Did you see Francois? I won the battle. Do you know this is really bad for your extractor? This too. Yeah, 
Any hoosters, that is the Glock 17 Gen 4, fired by me, your loving narrator, Joe. Can't call myself the narrator because there's already your narrator. So I'm just Joe, idiot supreme. Yeah, I'm going to clean up about 200 rounds of casings and let this cool down so I can take it out, put my barrel back in, and uh, waggle, waggle. go on back to the store. So. If you're liking Vrange videos, make sure you let me know by leaving me a comment, a like, subscribe. Thumbs up, buy some of the stuff you see in the links down below, such as when Core sent me some belts. You'll help the channel grow, and you'll have my ever-eternal gratitude. So, one of those has got to be worth something, right? I'll talk to you later.